To celebrate International Women's Day, here's my full conversation with our MP for Newcastle Central and Shadow Minister for Science, Research and Digital, Chion Mora. This was originally recorded for the Holmes Memorial Lectures on Women in STEM, so if you haven't watched that already, I'll add the link in the description below. I was lucky enough to be able to speak to Chi a few months ago about her experiences as an engineer, her transition into politics and what the government are doing to try to increase diversity in STEM. I'm Chi Onwara, I'm the Member of Parliament for Newcastle upon Tyne Central and the Labour Shadow Minister for Digital Science and Research. The first few questions I'm going to ask you more about um, your time as an engineer. Um, so could you tell us a bit about your career pathway and how you became an engineer? Well, I knew, um, I think from, I remember from about the age of seven or eight that I wanted to go into science or engineering. And I was always I was kind of inspired by just the sense that Newcastle and North East is a place where we make and build things. You know, and I remember seeing, you know, like the, the Tyne Bridge or the Turbinia, which was Parsons' fantastic um, first uh, turbine uh, ship and just being kind of just really fascinated and, and inspired and wanting to know how things work and wanting to make things which would make the world work better. So, so I was always interested in science and I decided to do engineering when I was about 14 because I thought that's when you had to make choices. And I thought I wanted to build things. I didn't want to research the theory of it, though that's great. I wanted to actually make things that work. And so um, I applied to Imperial College. I went to Imperial, which was a whole experience in itself, which I, don't, which I didn't enjoy at the time. But when I graduated, I decided luckily in some respects to go into this new emerging area called communications. And this was in the 80s, just as if you like, this sort of first wave of telecommunications growth was taken off. And so Basically, I, as an engineer, I'd say I worked from 1987 to, to 2010. I worked all over the world. I worked in hardware development, software development. I built uh, um, private business exchange systems. I built out networks in, you know, nationwide networks in, in Nigeria. I developed uh, signaling systems. I, 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 I looked at the marketing of services I did VPNs I mean I had really you know I always say that engineering in my view that was it was the best job you know apart from being New the MP for Newcastle upon Tyne Central so I had a great career working all over the world France uh, the US Nigeria the UK um, and um, it was great to wake up every day and know that you were doing something that was challenging and interesting and really you know making the world better. And what was your um, favourite thing about being an engineer? One of my favourite things about being an engineer was that, uh, was that you know, that every day you, know, you, you, were, you were solving problems which would make the world work better in some way. So it wasn't, you know, there was, and it was, and also this thing about science and engineering is creative because you were creating new solutions. Uh, and so that I never, you know, it's never, it was never bored. Um, it's never, everything was a, was challenging and exciting and then also you know what I really liked about engineering was that you, that you left behind is different from politics you could see what you you know like in Nigeria there's a um, there's a glow I've helped build out the first uh, GSM network in Nigeria um, by a company called MTN and that you know that network is still there it's still running people are still using it so I think it's a, it's a practical it's a sort of practical thing that it makes a difference the people's lives that you can kind of measure you know and, and that and that it's always there's always changing and there's always something new to learn you know I learned so much again as, as an engineer as well and also I've got to say you know there's something very powerful about being a woman engineer and whilst there was lots of um challenges and barriers to overcome you know I you know knew absolutely that my my soft my software design and my network worked because it worked and that would be you know that was what I was judged on and people might have their prejudice and their stereotypes and unfortunately many did but ultimately whether or not something worked was down to my my ability to engineer it and that couldn't be sort of prejudiced away kind of leads on to my next question then when you were um, working in engineering or even when you were studying did you find that you were often one of only a few women in a team or in a room and how did you find that 
Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, at, at Imperial, I think women, women on the electrical engineering course were one in 10. This is in the 80s. Um, as an engineer, I mean, I say, you know, I was always, almost always, you know, the only woman and the only person of colour, apart from when I worked in Nigeria. That's great. Uh, and also the only northerner and often the only, you know, the person with a, of a working class background. And so that was very, you know, isolating. And it could be, I think, I think what people, you know, it's very tiring always being the exception and always being the only one. Um, and so yeah, that is, the, there's that to deal with in addition to, you know, at times overt sexism uh, and or, racism now i think i also i want to say with that that i think things have changed a lot since the 80s uh, and 90s thank god when it comes to that i mean and that there is been some progress in you know in in, in bringing and making engineering more diverse but it is a, it is a it is a challenge to be to be the only one in the room and the way i dealt with that was to have really good networks i'd say outside of uh, outside of engineering or in different engineering bodies so as a part of um, women in telecoms technology and also you know I, i'm also going to say that you know as a, as a socialist as a, as a labor uh person i fundamentally believe in you know sort of the core that everyone is uh equal and deserves equal opportunities so having you know having that it's hard sometimes when that was being challenged but that helped me as a fundamental belief what made you want to kind of move away from engineering and into politics? Uh, well, so, uh, so that's a really good question. So I, you know, I, I, I wanted to be because of science engineering since I was seven, eight, nine. Um, I joined the Labour Party when I was 16. And to be honest, I would have joined when I was nine if you'd been able to, but you couldn't. <laughs> you know, and so um, I was always active in the Labour Party. And um, I think um, I think there were two things. I mean, I, as I say, engineering is a fantastic career. There were two things which led to me standing to be the you know, the Labour Party candidate in Newcastle. The, um, the first thing, first was that um, the the MP for the area of Newcastle that I grew up in, where I went to school, or Kenton School, uh, announced he was retiring. And if I was going to go ever going to politics, I knew I wanted to represent the place where I grew up and the people I, you know, really cared about. And also, I'd say that I just I worked for Ofcom, which is the regulator for as a head of technology, and I'd also worked out in Nigeria, as I said. And what I what those two experiences really taught me was that you know I could design I could design the best sort of the best network in the world, and you know, part of me still thinks I could. Um, but whether or not it was used by people, whether or not people could afford to buy it, whether or not they had the skills to use it. That was all down to politics. <laughs> Whether or not regulation allowed you to build that, that was all down to politics. And I think, you know, in some way, it raised everything. Politics uh, drives the kind of the availability and the skills of people and, the, and, and you know, how, how our world and our country works. And so um, I, I thought I, I really wanted to, um, to make positive change in that way. What are some of like the skills that you use in your job now? I think it's really important to say that because I, I, I'll tell you that when I sort of left engineering, as I saw it, to become the MP for Newcastle, and that was the proudest moment of my life. Um, but I did have a sort of, um, oh dear, you know, I'm leaving engineering. I'm leaving, you know, science. You know, leave, and I had a sort of a period of grief. But actually, they use a lot of the skills and, you know, the experience of being an engineer has been incredibly useful for, to me in Parliament. And, uh, you know, it's the, in the really different ways. I mean, one oh, you know, obvious way is that technology and uh, science, you know, more broadly, you know, sort of like the scientific method of behind so much of how we live our lives and increasingly just in the last 10 years, and right now, you think we're in a pandemic, you know, it's science which is going to save us through the vaccine and the development process for that. And it is technology, it is digital, it is on, online Zooms, et cetera, which are helping us to stay you know, together and to work and to uh, you know, communicate even in these conditions. So science and technology are incredibly, incredibly important. And so you know, those skills yeah, are, are used. And then I think, just understanding, understanding data and evidence and statistics and the sort of maths 
you know, is actually really, really helpful when trying to understand, you know, the, the challenges and the, the, the impact of policies on people and the challenges that people in, in Newcastle are facing. You mentioned that you're a Shadow Minister for Science, Research and Digital. Uh, can you explain a bit about what that actually involves? Oh, so, um, so I'm a Labour MP and um, in this country, and it's not in every country, you know, we have what's called a shadow government. So there's the government, you know, the Tories in government, and then the opposition, right, the leading opposition has a shadow government. And so I am the shadow minister for the, and I'm responsible for digital science and, and um, research. So what that means is that I'm responsible, firstly, for holding the government to account on their policies or I will, you know, lack of effective policies, you know, when it comes to getting every child online or making getting us fibre to the home or investing more in science or supporting science startups, you know, or making research and development and the, the, the um, you know, our, our future transition to automated uh, jobs, making sure that uh, people are uh, still good jobs for people in all those areas. I, I hold the, the government to account, so I ask them questions. I um, I I, I ask them, you know, in in, in parliaments, etc. And then I'm also responsible for developing Labour's policies in those areas, which are obviously much better than the government's policies. Um, and developing those policies, working with um the rest of the Labour parliamentary members and stakeholders, you know, and um, you know, so to develop the policy sort of in, in time for the next uh, election. So in practice, it means I spend quite a lot of time still talking to engineers and to um, you know to to, to telephone, telecoms network operators, to scientists, to uh, universities, to you know, to to understand the research and science and digital uh, sectors in this country. And then. Notice that you're also chair of the all party parliamentary group on diversity and inclusion in STEM. Can you tell us a bit about the work that that group does as well? Uh, so, I mean, and this, you know, this is one of the things I didn't know before going into parliament, but in parliament, you know, obviously we have there's the, there's the Tories, the government and the opposition, but there are also these things called all party parliamentary groups. And like the name implies, this is where members of parliament and lords, you know, members of the House of Lords, peers, come together around issues that are important to them. And it's really about you know, raising, you know, raising, raising these issues, making sure they get attention, you know, suggesting change. And so one of the, one of, you know, obviously my passion, one of my passions uh, is uh, women in science, uh, in diversity in STEM. I spent a lot of time, as we discussed, as the only put one in a room. And during that time, I had a lot of time to think about some of the ways in which uh, we could have change for the, for the better. So, um, so at that the all party parliamentary group is MPs and peers who really want to see change and want to make sure that our STEM sectors are diverse and that's in terms of gender, but also ethnicity, disability, you know, neuro, neurodiverse, just because I really so strongly believe that innovation is about different people from different backgrounds, different skills, different, um, you know, the, you know different uh, parts of the, of the science of science and engineering world coming together to make something new and if we're excluding so many people which is what we seem to be doing now you know it, it's it's wrong in a kind of moral way but it also means we're less uh we're less innovative so they, we come together and we do inquiries and you know we uh, we've done a great inquiry into into education and how that can support more access to STEM and then we're looking at um, other aspects of diversity and people can participate and follow us online and uh, we have open meetings on Zoom right now and we're just looking at the ways in which we can you know make sure that we don't have to wait another 20-30 years before we have real diversity in our science, uh, technology, engineering and, and sectors. So are you able to share any of the findings or what the group is looking at doing to increase diversity? In terms of the inquiry that we did into uh, education and some of the things were around um, access to, um, to uh, so supportive environments from a very young age. Um, so that you know that that STEM and science and engineering were, were being positively viewed uh, from, from a young age. Um, it was also about um, ensuring that 
you know, one of the challenges in this country is that, you know, you have to make decisions when you're 14 and, you know, uh, when you choose your um, GCSEs. And that, that, could be, uh, that could be a barrier to, uh, particularly when there's social pressure to keep um, to, uh, on, on young girls and women, some of the sort of the, the prejudices by, uh, by some of our universities around, um, you know, the, the people have, that, that the applicants need to come from a certain background or have certain types of qualifications. What, what, we, what we did was take evidence from different uh, academics and, uh, and then we put together our, our report um, to, to, to suggest some of the ways that, in which these can be addressed. Do you have any advice for young women that might be aspiring to a career in STEM? So, so my, my primary advice to anyone, any young women, girls interested in a career in engineering would be yes, do it. Yes. You know, it is. It, I, I, I've talked a bit about some of, some of the challenges and some of the, um, you know, the barriers that I experienced. And I sort of say that, you know, things, things are changing. Things have changed. But even with all, with all that, you know, I still, I think it was the best, sort of job in the world. And I felt it was a job which had much more job security than being a member of parliament. I can tell you, we always, always need uh, engineers. Uh, and I'd also say, but I would say, you know, that one of the, you know, I was really, I having the help and support, the support, I think, of others who are experiencing the same thing. So, so look for networks, form networks. It's not, you know, um, it's not, necessarily about mentoring though that can help but just share just taking strength from others um, who are you know facing the same challenges and I think the other thing I you know one of the things I would say is that you know the <laughs> the best mentors that I had um, as an engineer uh, were men you know now that's because I almost I only ever worked for men because there were never any of that for women, you know. That's part of that. But I did have some great, you know, great sort of uh, male, uh, you know, allies. I think it's the term we use now, who really uh, provided support and help and help as well. And so that you know, you may feel that you're kind of in a, alone in a, in a position of uh, in terms of diversity, but that's can't you know, should also always be able to find as you look for and find support help and allyship it's good advice thank you <laughs>